Hey everyone, today we're going to be reading August 15th. Uh, we are still a day or two behind, <coughs> but we're catching up. So today we're going to start the book of Esther, Esther chapters 1 and 2, 2 Corinthians 6, 11 through 7, 16, Psalm 41 and Proverbs 21, 19 and 20. So here we go. The book of Esther, chapters 1 and 2. Now in the days of Ahasuerus, the Ahasuerus who reigned from India to Ethiopia over 127 provinces, in those days when King Ahasuerus sat on his royal throne in Susa, the citadel, in the third year of his reign, he gave a feast for all of his officials and servants. For all his officials and servants. The army of Persia and Media and the nobles and governors of the provinces were before him. While he showed the riches of his royal glory, glory and the splendor and pomp of his greatness for many days, 180 days. And when these days were completed, the king gave for all the people present in Susa the citadel, both great and small, a feast lasting for seven days in the court of the garden of the king's palace. There were white cotton curtains and violet hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rods and marble pillars and also couches of gold and silver on a mosaic pavement of porphyry, <coughs> marble, mother of pearl and precious stones. Drinks were served in golden vessels, vessels of different kinds, and the royal wine was lavished according to the bounty of the king. And drinking was according to this edict. There is no compulsion. For the king has given orders to all the staff of his palace to do as each man desired. Queen Vashti also gave a feast for the, for the women in the palace that belonged to King Ahasuerus. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Mehuman Bissa, Bistha, Harbona, Bigtha, and Ag, Ab, Abagtha, Zether, and Carcass, the seven eunuchs who served in the presence of King Ahasuerus, to bring Queen Vashti before the king with her royal crown, in order to show the peoples and the princes her beauty, for she was lovely to look at. But Queen Vashti refused to come at the king's command, delivered by the eunuchs. And at this the king became enraged, and his anger burned within him. Then the king said to the wise men who knew the times, for this was the king's procedure, toward all who were versed in law and judgment, the men next to him being Karshena, Shethar, Admatha, Tarshish, Miriz, Marsena, and Memukan, the seven princes of Persia and Media, who saw the king's face and sat first in the kingdom. According to the law, what is to be done to Queen Vashti because she has not performed the, king, the command of King Ahasuerus delivered by the eunuchs? Then Memukan said in the presence of the king and the officials, Not only against the king has Queen Vashti done wrong, but also against the officials and all the peoples who are in all the provinces of King Ahasuerus. For the queen's behavior will be made known to all women, causing them to look at their husbands with contempt, since they will say, King Ahasuerus commanded Queen Vashti to be brought before him, and she did not come. This very day the noble women of Persia and Media, who have heard of, queen Va of the queen's behavior, will say the same to all the king's officials, and there will be contempt and wrath in plenty. If it pleases the king, let a royal order go out from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, so that it may not be repealed, that Vashti is never again to come before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal position to another who is better than she. So when the decree was so when the decree made by the king is proclaimed throughout all his kingdom, for it is vast, all women will give honor to their husbands, high and low alike. This advice pleased the king and the princes, and the king did as Memucan proposed. He sent letters to all the royal provinces, to every province in, his, in its own script, and to every people in its own language, that every man be master in his own household, and speak accordingly to the language of his people. After these things, when the anger of King Ahasuerus had abated, he remembered Vashti, and what she had done, and what had been decreed against her. Then the king's young men who attended him said, Let beautiful, king, let beautiful young virgins be sought out for the king. And let the king appoint officials in all the provinces of his kingdom to, ca to gather all the beautiful young virgins to the harem in Susa the citadel, under custody of Haggai, the king's eunuch who is in charge of the women. Let their cosmetics be given them, and let the young women who and let the young woman 
who pleases the king be queen instead of Vashti. This pleased the king, and he did so. Now there was a Jew in Susa, the citadel, whose name was Mordecai, the son of Jair, son of Shimei, son of Kish, a Benjaminite, who had been carried away from Jerusalem among the cap captives, carried away with Jeconiah, the king of Judah, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had carried away. He was bringing up Hadassah, that is Esther, the daughter of his uncle, for she had neither father nor mother. The young, the young woman had a beautiful figure and was lovely to look at. And when her father and her, mother, and her mother died, Mordecai took her as his own daughter. So when the king's orders, order and his edict were proclaimed, and when many young women were gathered in Susa the citadel in custody of Haggai, Esther also was taken into the king's palace and put in custody of Haggai, who had charge over the, of the woman. women. And the young women pleased him and won his favor. And he quickly provided... <coughs> Sorry, And the young woman pleased him and won his favor, and he quickly provided her with her cosmetics and her portion of food, and with seven chosen women from the king's palace, and advanced her and her young woman, women to the best place in the harem. Esther had not made known, to her, made known her people or kindred, for Mordecai had commanded her not to make it known. And every day Mordecai walked in front of the court of the harem to learn how Esther was and what was happening to her. Now when the turn came for each of the young women to go into King Ahasuerus after being twelve months under regulations for the women, since this was the regular period of their beautifying, six months with oil and myrrh and six month with, months with spices and ointments for women, when the young woman, women went into the king in this way, she was given whatever she desired to take with her from the harem to the king's palace. In the evening she would go in, and in the morning she would return to the second harem in custody of Shazgad, the king's eunuch, who was in charge of the concubines. She would not go into the king again unless the king delighted in her and she was summoned by name. When the turn came for Esther to the daughter of Abihel, the uncle of Mordecai, who had taken her as his own daughter to go into the king, she asked for nothing except what Haggai, the king's eunuch, eunuch who had charge of the women, advised. Now Esther was winning favor in the eyes of all who saw her. And when Esther was taken to King Ahasuerus into his royal palace in the tenth month, which is the month of Tebeth, in the seventh year of his reign, the king loved Esther more than all the, other, all the women, and she won grace and favor in his sight more than all the virgins, so that he set the royal crown on her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Then the king gave a great feast for all his officials and servants. It was Esther's feast. He also granted a remission of taxes to the province, provinces, and gave, gave gifts with royal generosity. Now when the virgins were gathered together the second time, Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate. Esther had not made her known, had not made known, <coughs> Esther had not made known her kindred or her people as Mordecai had commanded her. For Esther obeyed Mordecai just as, the, as when she was brought up by him. In those days, as Mordecai was sitting at the king's gate, Bigthan and Teresh, two of the king's eunuchs, who guarded the threshold, became angry and sought to lay hands on King Ahasuerus. And this came to the knowledge of Mordecai, and he told it to Queen Esther. And Esther told the king in the name of Mordecai. When the affair was investigated and found to be so, the men were both hanged in the, on the gallows, and it was recorded in the book of the Chronicles of the, in the presence of the king. 2 Corinthians 6, 11 through seven sixteen. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own affections. In return, I speak it as to children, widen your hearts also. Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? What agreement has the temple of God with idols? For we are the temple of the living God, as God said. I will make my dwelling among them and walk among them, and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Therefore go out from their midst and be separate from them, says the Lord, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will welcome you, and I will be a father to you, and you shall be sons and daughters to me, says the Lord Almighty. Since we have these promises, beloved, since we have these promises, beloved, 
Let us cleanse ourselves from every defilement of body and spirit, bringing holiness to completion in the fear of God. Make room in your hearts for us. We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have taken advantage of no one. I do not say this to condemn you, for I said before that you are in our hearts to die together and also to live together. I am acting with great boldness towards you. I have great pride in you. I have great pride in you. I am filled with comfort. In all our affliction, I am overflowing with joy. For even when we came to Macedonia, our bodies had no rest, but we were afflicted at every turn, fighting without and fear within. But God, who comforts the downcast, comforted us by the coming of Titus, and not only by his coming, but, but also by the comfort with which he was comforted by you, as he told us of your longing, your mourning, your zeal for me, so that I rejoiced still more. For even if I made you grieve with my letter, I do not regret it, though I did regret it, for I see that the letter grieved you, though only for a while. As it is, I rejoice, not because you were grieved, but because you were grieving, grieved into repenting, for you felt a, a godly grief, so that you suffered no loss through us. For godly grief produces a repentance that leads to salvation without regret, whereas worldly grief produces death. For see what earnestness this godly grief has produced in you, but also what eagerness to clear yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what longing, what zeal, what punishment. At every point you have proved yourselves innocent in the matter. So although I wrote to you, it was not for the sake of those it was not for the sake of the one who did the wrong, nor for the sake of the one who suffered the wrong, but in order that your earnestness might be revealed to you in the sight of God. Therefore, we are comforted. And besides your own comfort, we rejoice still more at the joy of Titus, because his spirit has been refreshed by you all. For whatever boasts I made to him about you, I was not put to shame. But just as everything we said to you was true, so also our boasting before Titus has proved true. And his, afflict, and his affection for you is even greater, as he remembers the obedience, you, ob obedience of you all, how you received him with fear and trembling. I rejoice because I have complete confidence in you. Psalm 41. To the choir master, a psalm of David. Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. You, you do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? And when one comes to see me, he utters empty words, while his heart gathers iniquity. When he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. <coughs> they say, a deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout in triumph over me. But you have upheld me, upheld me because of my integrity and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen. Amen and amen. Proverbs twenty one nineteen and 20. It is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. Precious treasure and oil are in a wise man's dwelling, but a foolish man devours it. All right. Well, tomorrow we will begin August 16th reading with Esther 3 and 4. Uh, then we'll move on to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, Psalm 42, and Proverbs 21, 21, and 22. So thanks for reading with me today, and I'll see you back here tomorrow.